Hey guys, Eddie from Elo and World here. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about easy website makers and their ads. So stay tuned. You know how you always see these ads online, on TV, everywhere. You know, I mean, all these YouTubers online, they always talk about, you know, host your site here, you know, make your website super easy. Um, you know, they talk, they make it seem like it's, you know, a one hour thing. Some even, some even actually mention that you can do it in less than an hour. So I want to tell you guys the truth behind all of this stuff, because there is no way that is true. I'm a website developer and I'm not trying to pitch you guys my services or anything like that. Um, but, you know, I do web design, web, web development, all these things. So I know what goes behind all this stuff. And there is no way that it's just super easy, you know, just like how they show you in the ads. I mean, you as the client have to always do a lot of work in order to get your website up there. There is no way that you know, you can just tell the client, hey, I want this website and very little uh, information and then boom, they just make it for you. You know, they have to research your um, your market. They have to research your business. They have to do a lot of things in order to get these things done. And if they're not doing all these things, believe me, it's not worth it for you, especially when, you know, it's like some of them are saying it costs one dollar a month or five dollars under ten bucks a month or whatever. That, there's no way that's going to be anything good. Just think of it this way. There's nothing that if it sounds too good to be true, then it is, you know, they're not mentioning so many things, so many things that are behind it, you know, scenes. And, you know, and I'm talking about some of these services like GoDaddy, Wix, Weebly, uh, Shopify, Squarespace. There's they're all over the Internet, all these websites. Right. So a lot of these websites and ads are always promoting like do it yourself. You can do it under an hour. There's re zero coding required. You know, you don't have to be a programmer, drag and drop templates. And they even show you how like very simple you can just drag and drop things here and there. And, you know, it, it's not like that. Like, yes, there is things that work similar ways, but there's no way you can build a website under an hour. You know, there's even web like web uh, ads and YouTubers who I've seen who are telling you how you can go online from Hostgator, Gate, um, Bluehost or whatever. And they're really trying to promote these places because they're getting affiliate marketing from it. You know, I, like I, I do some videos here, um, like uh, reviews where I link to certain products. But, you know, I'm using the affiliate marketing links, which there's nothing wrong with, because if you buy these things and you believe in the product, not just because I'm reviewing it and I'm showing you that it's a good product. Um, but if you look at this and do your own research and you want to buy it, you know, if you bought it through my link, you're helping me. There's nothing wrong with that. You're still getting it. Sometimes you're getting a discount, especially from these hosting places. If you're getting it through like one of those YouTubers, um, they give a discount code. And so you only buy it through them, you're getting that. But, you know, you might be stuck with these services because they, you know, you you got it like a three year term or something. And now you don't like it after like a few months or the service is bad. The, the um, customer service is not great. And, you know, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. For example, like GoDaddy, they have the worst hosting possible in many ways. I had a client who got his website hacked and just to restore it to an earlier version, it shouldn't even cost money. They had to pay over 200 bucks uh, just to restore it, which should be, you know, a free thing that you uh, or let's say me as a developer can go in there and actually do. And if not, they shouldn't be charging you that much money or at least, you know, they, if, they, if they did charge you, which they shouldn't, I think should be part of the service. Um, they shouldn't be charging that much money. And again, that's where like they can offer you the, you know, one dollar a month or two dollars or five dollars or ten dollars a month thing. But it doesn't work like this. And I'll tell you guys, like, I'll break it down what the costs are for, you know, web making websites. And this is based on like, you know, the, today's video, whatever this video is released. It's based on now. It's not, you know, if you're watching this video years from now or months from now, even it could be different because many places they raise their prices and, and things change. Right. Um, and this is not even including things like the content, which is like the biggest thing about making websites, you know, Nobody's going to write your content for you if you don't provide him anything. Like I, you know, I had a barber friend who basically told me to make his website and he gave me some information. But out of that information, I was able to, you know, make some paragraphs and stuff. But he gave me something. He didn't just say, build me a website. You know, I'm a barber. That's it. I have to get his logo from him. If he doesn't have one, I have to create him for one for him. I have to get all the images. You know, there's a lot of images online that are free images and videos. 
And I'll actually link to a video, uh, maybe in the end of the video, we can uh, see a little bubble or something um, that shows you where I've, I've done a video where you can find a lot of images and videos for free, completely free, royalty free. You can use on your websites and anywhere else. You don't have to put links for attribution or anything like that. So make sure you watch that video. It's helpful for everybody. Um, and again, I didn't make that video because I wanted money or anything. I just found a lot of good resources that I wanted to share. Okay. So anyways, nobody mentions these things like, yeah, you can add your own videos and your own images, but you don't have these things. Many people don't have it. You know, if you're a, a person who, let's say, you want to start a laminate um, website, you have flooring or, you know, photographer, right? As a photographer, yes, you will have a lot of images, but maybe you don't have videos. A lot of video photographers nowadays are doing videos, but if you're in a business like a restaurant or something, you know, cell phone pictures don't count. They're going to look like garbage. Just, you know, do yourself a favor. No matter how good cell phone cameras are getting, still to this, you know, like right now there's a Samsung uh, S8, um, iPhones, whatever it is, you know, they're still not going to be nice cameras. Maybe a year or two from now, maybe five years from now, I don't know. But what I know is DSLRs and higher end cameras, they give you that quality. Okay, there is a difference. That's why you hire a photographer for your wedding and you don't just give it to people with cameras or phone cameras. Um, there's lighting involved. I don't know if you're seeing the some of the lighting I have here, but I can I can probably take a screenshot and show you guys. You know, there's lighting involved. Photographers know what they're doing. You know, they have nice, they use flashes in the right times, in the right places. Um, I've shot some events before and, you know, I, I use it in a kind of artistic way. Um, anyways, I don't want to talk too much about that stuff, but basically you need nice images, you need nice videos. If there isn't free stuff, um, especially things that you want to get customized, you will have to buy stuff, right? There is, you know, websites out, out there that sell these things. You can always buy it from them. Uh, it depends how you are, uh, let's say if you register, there's sometimes discount codes that you can apply even for domains and hosting services. Uh, the way I do it, for example, is I go to, you know, search for um, like do, um, domain discounts and whatnot. And then when I do buy the domain, I try to apply that. Not, it doesn't always work. Sometimes there isn't discounts, but you know, if it works, it works. It's, it's great. You're saving some money, especially if you're buying it for more than three years and five years and so on. Um, so there's a lot of things to consider, as I'm saying. Many of the other things that people don't realize is when you have images, for example, you bought an image or you found it online, you know, it has to be nice quality. Most people don't just, they ignore this. They're like, oh yeah, I'll just create a website and get some images or whatever. These things really matter. Okay. People love your website because it looks good and it functions. Okay. These two things go hand in hand. Look, this is why Apple products have over the years gotten more attraction because beautiful products and they work well. Um, I don't want to get into that, but there's a lot of issues with it too. Yeah especially in the recent years. But anyway, so, you know, simple as like m many people come to me and they're like, oh, you know, this image, just my website loads so, so slow and whatever. Well, of course, because your image is like, you know, huge. It's like so large in size and dimensions that it's eating up bandwidth. Okay. The browser is going to go really slow when it loads it. You have to resize it to the replace. Cropping. There's a lot of things that people don't, don't you know, as clients, you're not knowledgeable enough to do this. Or even if you did do it with a program here and there, it might still not be like the most optimal way to do it. Okay. You have to get proper people to do this. You know, I'm not going to hire um, somebody who, you know, like, let's say I have a problem with my electricity. I have to bring an electrician to do it. Okay. This goes the same thing. I'm not going to just go and fiddle with it myself because, oh yeah, I think I know something or I, watch the video and I have a program, you know, you have tools. It doesn't make, it doesn't make, make you a specialist. Okay. You have to get the right people. And I, I know it sounds like I'm pitching ideas that, you know, you come to me or whatever. I'm just saying, go with anybody who is a specialist in his area. Okay. If you want to do things your own way, make sure you know what you're doing. That's all, you know, if, if you guys can do it, whoever it is, go ahead by all means, just do it yourself. Okay. For the longest time, there was a lot of things I didn't know how to do. And I, you know, dabbled with it and I learned and, and that's fine. But when things go wrong, sometimes you have to go to the specialist. Okay. You have to know to the right people who are basically doing this for a living. Another thing I want to mention is content writing. Okay. 
you you might think like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna give this guy some information, and uh, you know, that's it. They'll just make it for me. If you have ten pages and all you've done is like an hour meeting with them, you probably haven't given them enough information. If you send them a brochure, you know, with all your stuff that you're doing, you know, for example, let's say it was a I don't know company that actually fixes I don't know, let's say refrigerators. If they have a brochure mostly most of it is images that's not going to help okay you have to have content in there writing text that's stuff that search engine wants okay not images not videos search engines want that mobile first nowadays that's best okay that stuff can be designed to fit nicely you know when you're reading it it's not stuff that bothers your eye contrast color all these things matter but content is king that's one thing on the web and Writing for web is different than writing a book. You have to give people the time to do it. Like if I do it for my own websites, I spend time to do it because I know what I want, but I want it to sound really good and to be proper and everything. So I spend a lot of time on my content. And this is again, when I want it to be really good, like on my DJ site, I spend some good time on it and you could see the content in there. Looks good, spelled properly, all that stuff. Okay. So anyways, enough with that, but just one, one more time, content is king. It's key to a lot of search, good results, and, and everything like that. When they're telling you, oh yeah, build your website at ease, and you know, it takes a few minutes. No, it's not like that. There is a lot of work being done, okay? Nobody can build a website in, in 88 hours. So there is things like, you know, we have to have the domain, and when you buy it, it has to propagate. It takes 24 to 48 hours, and this means like, you know, if you go to buy a website, buy domain and have the hosting set up and everything, which is sometimes things that as a client, you have no idea because you don't even know how to check your email most of the time, right? Oh, I don't even know how to check my email. So how the hell am I going to do this? Well, this is the thing. So, you know, again, going back to the, to the propagation thing, um, when you buy it, you might be able to view the website in a couple of hours or so, but people are in, in a different time, um, time zone, like Australia, or whatever, they probably won't even see the site for another 24 to 48 hours. Okay, so next thing I want to talk about is SSL certificates. So a lot of these places, they don't even mention this. I don't think, like, as a client, you probably even never he heard of this term. So what it is basically is like certification so that your website is more secure when people purchase things or you have a, like a login system, you know, users and, and all these passwords and whatnot. So people will trust it more if it's SSL certified. It'll have like a log and shows that it's more secure. It's better, right? As a whole, for the internet, it's, it's better things are going that way. And this is one thing where up until recently, you had to have if you're selling things online. If you're a business who sells things online, you had to have that. Uh, you still have to do it right now. But the difference is before, you were being charged up to like 200 bucks to do it. 100, minimum was 100 bucks, I believe, right? So 200 bucks just to have that per year. And a lot of these places like Weebly, Wix, and GoDaddy, whatever, wouldn't even mention that. Oh, yeah, build your website for $5 a month. You know, this is just per year, extras, right? Just to have something like this, a simple thing. And recently, Google has made some changes where they want to push this for every website out there. And p websites who are not having that, they're kind of getting dinged in search engine results and, you know, going down the, the drain, basically, where people who have SSL certificates are ranking higher. And this is going to get more important as time goes. So the only difference is now there's a couple of services, I believe so far, there might be more in the future, hopefully, where they're providing this for free. And this is so nice because for the longest time, people were getting charged so much money just to have this stupid thing on there, right? So, you know, it's nice to have some services where they're offering this. And, you know, as a web developer, I really, really appreciate this. Templates. There's a lot of places that are selling you templates, right? They're like, oh yeah, you can make it just pick a template, you know, if you're a restaurant, pick this template. If you, it doesn't, you know, there's so many like templates out there that have flaws, even paid ones. Okay. I buy things that have, they say it's perfect, but when you look at it for, when you customize it, there's going to be issues a lot of times, you know, and you know, you don't have time to do these things or you won't even know how to. So this is where having somebody as you know dedicated to do these things makes a lot of sense and it's just much better, right? So now I want to talk about the templates just a bit more in detail. Um, now, if you're going with something like WordPress or Shopify or whatever, a service or, or a platform that has its own like design and, and templates and whatnot, you got to make sure of a lot of things. You know, if things were to go wrong, like as a client, a lot of people don't know, you know, 
where the main menu goes and where the, f the footer menu goes. Like I know how I'm saying it, it's proper, but when you're in the theme, in the dashboard, a lot of things that you don't know where they are. Like even for platforms that have been around for a while, it's still sometimes really hard for you know people who have never used it just to navigate it. And it'll take like sometimes half hour to two hours just to find where something is. Um, They'll try to be more, you know, like, you know, with the way they, they name things, you know, properly. But still, somebody who's never dealt with something is going to be hard for him to know where certain things are. Like if you want to change things, if you want to update plugins and something breaks down, you'll, you'll have to have somebody to do the support. And a lot of these places, believe me, I've tried to deal with, with them. You know, you'll have like the the main, uh, the first support like level and they, you know, most of the time I know more than them. So I have to like talk to them and explain everything and then move on to the second level and then the third level and so on. So sometimes you have to bypass the first to get to the third, but you know, you don't even know sometimes how to explain the problem to them. So there's a lot of issues there, but you know, they have to like put in that effort and actually do it better. And sometimes this support is not always available from whatever you, you, service you choose. So just make sure you're, you're choosing a service or that you at least have heard of that, you know, being good. Um, second thing I was going to mention is there is difference between HTML versus like a service like WordPress. Again, I'm mentioning those two just because, you know, WordPress is like the most popular for a lot of things and what most people will be, will it suit most people. Um, so if you have no knowledge of HTML and building the site through code, most likely you're, gonna, you're not going to choose that. Um, even though I like it for many reasons, right? You know, just more secure and more whatever, all these things. Um, however, people are, you know, going with WordPress for it. Like, uh, I think most sites now on the internet are using WordPress. Uh, and it's a platform, from those who don't, don't know, it's a platform where you can build your websites. It's super nice for blogs, and that's how it kind of started. And it got more popular into a bigger CMS, uh, content management system and whatnot. But, um, you know, you have to kind of make that choice sometimes and a lot of these services will probably push you towards wordpress even though i find there's a lot of security flaws and there's just more generally issues like with you know when things update that's where a lot of things go wrong and that's actually the fact for a lot of software out there because you know one thing updates and then the next thing breaks because it's too old and you know compatibility issues so i'll, I'll just break it down quickly for you guys right now generally to have just a website domain uh, probably minimum cost about 10 to 20 dollars for canadian or us doesn't matter um they might give you the first year for a dollar or two but that's just the first year don't be fooled there's no way that's going to be two dollars every year no way i guarantee if you can do that i will buy a hundred domains from you guys whoever is providing this okay um again this is most likely plus you know a lot of things that are going to come later so anyways domain and hosting they will cost 100 to 200 bucks a year Okay. And then you have SSL, which again, I've talked about it being free, but then there's a lot of things that you other, you know, have to consider, which is like, you know, um, the template, if you're buying one, right. If you are making something that's custom designed or custom, even just have a template that you want to customize, people are going to, you know, get paid to do this, right. They are spending time to do it and they're going to want that. So, you know, like, yes, they'll tell you it's responsive and all these things, but you got to actually test it in all devices and make sure yourself that this works in every scenario I want. Um, and when you're adding images, for example, I've given websites to clients where I've told them you have to upload images to certain size. People forget, you know, that's fair. But when things look wrong, you know, they're going to come to the de developer. And sometimes us being local is faster than people who are abroad because there's different different time zones. Not everyone does 24 hours uh, a day or 24 or 7. Um, so a lot of these things don't always work that way. So, you know, make sure of all these things, make sure that they have the amazing support that they do. Sometimes you have to test certain, uh, like businesses, like, you know, if you're going with GoDaddy, for example, for the hosting or whatever, you have to test them to know a lot of these things. Like, uh, you know, I trust only certain few and that's why I like to do deal with, with them. And they're also, you know, for price purposes, but customer support is really important. So make sure you, you pick ones that are really, really good, right? If again, and that's where someone who is always like dealing with these people would know better, right? If you 
uh, want to do, you know, paint. If you want to hire somebody who does this for a living, he'll know where to get good paint and good brushes and all these things instead of you going and doing these things because it's his business, right? So the final thing I want to mention is, you know, I know this video may, may have seemed like, you know, bringing down all these services, but you know, I just wanted to have to give you guys the truth behind all this. There is no way you can have a website, a complete website, even a one page website. OK, unless it's just like one paragraph, one picture and that's it. There's nothing like, you know, a full page with good content, good information that you want to rank first, especially on Google. You know, forget that people you have to pay to get ranked unless you have a lot of good content. OK, and I know there's I, I'm not trying to bring down SEO specialists, but search engine optimization and generally the way these things work always changes. OK, these people have to always keep up with it. Right. The same algorithm doesn't work a week from now or a month or a year from now. So these things always change and you have to make sure that you're up with it. And, you know, it's just one little change, just like um, how websites are now basically um, optimized as mobile first. And I keep telling a lot of my clients and, and people, you know, think mobile first. Don't look at how beautiful it looks on the desktop. And unfortunately, that's something we have to kind of, you know, work with uh, on the mobile where, you know, have to consider slow, slow uh, Internet speeds because not everyone has, you know, 3, 4G and LTE and all these things that are 5G coming soon. Um, some people have slower connections. Some people maybe just, you know, are, you know, their, their like, phones are too small, even though that's not like for me and you and, and some people here um, in, let's say, like where I live. But generally, there's a lot of people who don't have the latest tech. So you have to consider all these things and, you know, make the site fast. Um, so, yeah, fast loading speeds and mobile first. These are considered higher up now in search engines. So things like that didn't matter before. Now they really do. OK, if you want a website to rank high, you can't just, you know, use like your business dot Shopify dot com. You have to have an actual domain. OK, don't don't piggyback on these services just because they give you freebies. It doesn't look professional. If you have a website, OK, if, this is one thing that really bothers me, too, about like people. If you have a website like, you know, your name domain dot com, let's say it's domain your name dot com. OK, don't have like, you know, Eddie at Gmail dot com. That doesn't work or at Hotmail or Outlook or Yahoo. You have a business website already. Use that domain, you know, Eddie at your name dot com, whatever your name is at your name dot com. OK, use your domain. You'll get an email with it. If it's not free email, then that's a bad service. You should be getting free at least up to 10 emails. OK, 10 should be the minimum. In fact, actually, the ones I host with are like free. They give you unlimited. OK, so and I don't want to pitch them because, you know, there's things I, I don't like about them. So that's why I'm not mentioning who I host with. Um, but anyways, there's things that like, you know, you have to make it look professional. OK. Free websites, no, they're not good. No matter what you say, they're not going to be good unless somebody's doing it to you as a favor. OK, if somebody does it really fast, that means either they're really good or they've put a lot of time. OK, and again, this means this look if the website actually looks good and functions well. Otherwise, it's like it's not going to be good. If you want cheap and good, it can't be fast. If you want cheap and, and fast, it can't be good. OK. It, if it's good and fast, it's not going to be cheap. So just this is like probably for a lot of business out there. But for web design, web development, that's the way it's got to go. OK, just make sure you're paying people what they are deserved. OK, and um, there is nothing that's going to cost you ten dollars a month. Believe me, there is nothing like that. If you can prove it to me and give me a website, I'll actually go and, and change all my websites to them because there's nothing like that. OK, these websites and ads and, you know, oh, yeah, do it. Yourself. There's nothing like, man, you can't just do it yourself. OK, I if if there's anything like that, I will do it myself. I will go and change all my hosting to all my websites and their cli and my clients to these places. Unfortunately, that doesn't exist. It's just too good to be true. So I just want to leave you guys with some good. OK, there's still a lot of free themes out there that are wonderful. There's still a lot of good hosting and good domain for services. One tip, don't buy both from the same company. Buy domain from somebody else, buy hosting from somebody else. I know people will tell you it's easier to talk to each other, one company for both. 
no, don't do it. Okay. From my years in the industry, always get it from two different places. Um, you know, get the people who are specialized at the domain, get the people who are host, hosting uh, specialists, even media temple. And, and, you know, there's ones who are good, but they're not going to be, you know, cheap. Amazon is doing a lot of that too, right? Like, you know, their hosting services are fantastic, but you know, you have to, to find out like, what do you want? They provide a lot of things. Sometimes it could be too much, right? If you have like, let's say you want to back up your site to like a year ago or a month ago from because you had a hacker hack it and destroyed a lot of new things that you updated. You want to go back to a month ago? Some places make it too complicated or you have to pay to, to go back or whatever. You know, make sure you ask about all of these things before, before you get set with five and 10 years and so on. Um, one Actually, one small tip I want to leave you. If you're buying a domain, Google likes it when it's more than five years, at least five years, okay? If you're buying anything under three years, they kind of don't think that you're going to last in the business. They don't trust you like you're going to be, you know, in the street, for example, just like it is in real world, right? If you're opening for a short time, they're not going to pay you that attention that you need, okay? So if you're in it for the long run, yes, it's better for them. And again, these things change in, in, in all the time, right? So don't take my word for now, but just kind of keep it in mind. Okay. So anyways, that's kind of like it for this video. I hope it wasn't too long. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer as much as I can, as fast as I can. Um, if you're interested in the services I provide, you can contact me, I guess, even you know on YouTube here, leave me a comment or something. Um, and I'll, I'll get back to you guys again with whatever business inquiry you need. But again, this wasn't a pitch video. Don't, don't let people take advantage of you. Don't, don't trust these places. One other tip I just want to mention is that, you know, if you have a website that's, you know, somebody made for you, like, you know, five years ago, whatever, most likely it will need an update. It's the same thing for like business cards and, and other things. Like, you know, it's not like having a house and you have a couch that's there for like 10 years or five years. I'm not going to say 10, kind of 10 is too old. Um, but this is the kind of the same thing. Okay. If you have a website or a business card, your, your website is kind of like your business card online. In fact, some people, let's say they buy a generic name and they change it. Like, let's say it's eddiepotros.com for me. I can change that to be any business I want. It could be about photography, web design, whatever it is, right? Um, so that's kind of like your business card. And even on your business card, you just have, you know, your, your domain. Don't even mention what the business is. But anyway, the tip is basically don't keep it stale. Always updated. People like to see new things on your website. Um, you know, if you have a design that's sat there for a couple of years, most likely it's out of date, especially with the way the internet moves and the web too fast. Okay. So get just a fresh update, new images, maybe you don't have to change everything, but just update it here and there. So it looks new. It looks fresh and modern and up to date. Okay. So do that. You as the client have to spend the time to actually tell your designer developer what you want, how you want it, give them all the details. And the longer you, you take, this is just one thing I'm going to mention quickly. The longer you as a client take to get it, to get this information to your, um, the person who's doing this website for you, the longer they'll take to do it. Cause think of it this way. If I tell you guys, you know, Oh, I want to paint my house and they're like, what color, you know, as a painter, for example, right? If I don't get back to them a month from now, they're not going to do it. They're not going to just bring me two million colors and tell me, hey, which color do you want now? We're just going to start right away. It doesn't work like that. OK, you have to put a lot of work to do your website. Believe me, it's not going to be easy. It needs both people to work on it. It again, I may, might be making it more harsh than it's, it is. But reality, it is. You have to spend that time at least you know, I'm not going to say like hours and days and weeks, but you have to, well, yeah, hours for sure. You have to spend hours depending how complex the website is. But if it's like a 10 page website, you have to spend some time to tell your developer designer, um, what you really want on the website, what's most important, all the details, every detail matters, especially when it comes to writing the content. You know, I can't just write content for you if you don't provide me with the history and, and about you and there's a lot of things that goes okay so like i mean i provide let's say the photography and the video and stuff like this but if if you can provide me these things 
faster, by all means, and cheaper, let's say, right? By all means, yeah, I want that. But if it's not good quality, just don't do it. Don't don't give me like web cell phone images that are like, you know, so sharp or scaled up from Google. Another thing, just quickly to mention, images from Google, most of it is not going to be copyright free. Okay, especially if you just copy and paste. It doesn't work like that. Make sure this is copyright free, royalty free. You're able to use it for commercial purposes as well, not just personal. Okay. A lot of these things matter. I've, I've worked with a company where we got dinged $5,000 just for using one image that wasn't copyrighted because the client said, oh yeah, I have rights for this. Okay. Don't do it. Just done. So I hope you like this video. I wasn't trying to be really down about these places and, and the ads and the websites uh, like, you know, Wix, Weebly, whatever I mentioned in this here, uh, GoDad and all these places. Uh, don't trust when they say, do it yourself, okay? They'll probably tell you and try to convince you, oh yeah, it's super easy. Yeah, I know, like just drag and drop this and put your logo here. Do you have a logo? No, you don't. Most people don't, okay? It can't just be a text logo. I mean, yeah, most, let's say Nokia, whatever, right? That's a text logo. But still, that's probably been thought, you know, way in advance and whatever, right? Sometimes, actually, some of these logos are kind of just quick thought. Just make sure you do it right. So I hope you guys like this video. If you haven't subscribed, do so right now. And um, I'm going to try to put more content like this, just, you know, advice for people who are starting their business or in the business and just want to update and, and get better and, and uh, so on. So yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.